Okay, let's get started. Today we're learning Maseches Bava Kama Daf Peches. Um, today we're learning two sugyas. We're going to learn the sugya about how we know why there is no boshes by an evet, which was a shita that we saw yesterday of Rabbi Yehuda. As well, we'll find out why an evet and a ger can or cannot be um, an aid. And then on the Amid Beis, we're going to learn uh, quite a difficult sugya about whether a mother is able to gift something like uh, that she brought into the marriage to her son and ignore the husband in the picture, which is a little bit complicated. Let's get into all these sugyas. We're starting on the top of Peiches and Aleph, four lines down. Quoting from our Mishnah, it says, kanani Really, we're not talking about that. We're asking why my time of Rabbi Yehuda, that he holds that there's no boshes for an Eved, because Amar Kra, ki natsu anashim yachdov, ish ve'achiv. When is it that we have a case of boshes? That's when there's ish ve'achiv, when there's a man and his brother. Wow. Okay. So achva is a halachic terminology. If I say that you're my brother, that is halachic talk. It's halachic speak. We have uh, examples of this in the Torah, like ve'ahavta l'reacha kamocha. For me to have a din to love you, there first has to be a din of reya by you. If you're not a reya, then I have no mitzvah to love you. Here too, you're not considered achva if you're an evid, and because there's no din of achva, so then there's no bo- there's no boshes, which also has a fascinating subtext to it, is that the din of busha is the din in the fact that you and I are brothers. How can I hurt you? That's uh, that's kind of what's implied from the Gemara. You have the cool note on the side of what? You have the cool note on the side of that. No. Evan in the achva. <laughs> what? I didn't. I didn't put the note in there. First of all, why don't I have the note? That I'm I'm, I'm, I'm equally upset that I don't have the note as to what the note actually said. Say that again, that, yeah. that, that the din of Ahva is that, meaning he, there's no such thing as having a brother or a sister because he can, he, he can no, they, they cohabit with opposite genders and that's it. Holy cow. Okay, that's not what I thought the Gemara meant. Uh, does it say, neither. is that Gilion Ashas? Is that like a, yes. it's not Gilion Ashas. It's, it's a note in the rock from the Rashi. <clears throat> I have an asterisk in Rashi in the second line. Gimel. Lishna Chrina, Eved Ein Lo Achba Kain who betfusim Yishanim v'hushmat mi pnei hatzenzor. It's taken out because the the guy the the, the guyim didn't like the uh, attribution to being a chamor. I could understand that. Am ha chamor b'zeshamati. Wow. Okay, I didn't see that footnote. Anyways, that's what Rabbi Huda holds. There's no boshes because they have no din of ach. Okay. The Rabbanon, the Rabbanon say, achiv hu No. No, they still, even if you're an avid kanani, you still have a minimum din of halacha, like an isha, of mitzvos say shelo hazman grama, you're obligated in. So therefore, the din is that they would say that an evid does have boshes. So there's a machlokes tanoim between Rabbi Huda and the Rabbanon, whether an evid has a din of boshes. Rabbi Huda says they don't qualify for achiv. And, Rabbi, and the Rabbanon say they do qualify for Achiv because Achiv just means that you're Shaykh to Mitzvos. Elameata, if this in fact is the Machlokas, then the Rabbi Huda who says that they're not Achiv, then Zomeme Eved lo Yeharogu. Then if um, you have an Eved who becomes an Eid Zomeme, if there's no din of Achiv, then they shouldn't be killed if they get caught as Eidim Zomeme. What does the Pasuk say? Dechsiv asisim lo kasher zamam la'asos l'achiv. So if we say that there's no din of Achiv by an Eved, if the Eved gives Edus and he's caught a pair of Avadim give Edus and they're caught as Edim Zomimin, we talk or should say, Lo Yaharogu, that they're not able to be killed. There's no din of Eved. Amarava, maybe that's true, but Amarava, Amarav Shesha, Samar Kra, Uviyarta, Ramikir Becha, Mikol Makom. That when we are talking about Edim Zomimin, they have a fundamental din of Ra. And Uviyarta, Ramikir Becha, even if it's an Eved who doesn't have a din of Ach, we would still kill these Edim, these Avadim who became Edim Zomimin. Elameata, let's keep asking on this Machlokes Rabbanan and Rabbi Huda. Elameata, if this is true, we're 12 lines down on Peiches and Aleph. If it is true, according to the Rabbanan, that there is a din of Achiv by an Eved, and therefore there is a din of Boshes, then Eved Yehei Kasher Lamalchus. In order to have someone who's to, to, someone to be a Melech, they have to be Achiv. 
Pasha, they have to be Achiv. So if you're saying that they have a din of Achiv because they have a din of Achiv like an Isha, so therefore they should be kosher to be a king. According to that, we should have a problem with a ger according to everyone. Rashi, Rashi Tikshi Lach Ger, seven lines down from the top. The Gemara says, Shaleidaso Veho Raso Vikdusha. You have to have the mother be a yid. So therefore you'd have a kash even by a ger also. And Ella says the Gemara, that when we're talking about the din of a melech, the din of a melech is always from the choicest of your brothers. And the way it's understood here is having someone who's mamish a yid, mother and father, having a, a full set of parents who are who are both Jewish, but not only one parent, seemingly. Again, it's not so super clear from the Gemara whether or not having just a Jewish mother is sufficient, but uh, if you're a ger proper, um, then you're seemingly not shy for malchus. And according to the sheet of the Rabbanon, that there is a din of Achiv by an Eved, Eved kosher le'edus. Then an Eved should be able to be an aid. Why? Because one third of the way down, the pastor has the word Achiv. And if an Eved has a din of Achiv, like the Rabbanon say, in that an Eved has, an Eved Kanani at least, has the same din as an Isha. Obviously, an Eved Ivri is the uh, same din of, uh, as everybody. So if he's a man, he's a full set of halachos. But if you're an Eved Kanani, you have a din of an Isha. So therefore, we should say that maybe an Eved who has a din of Achiv can be an aid. Says the Gemara, Amar Ula, Edus, Lomotis Amis. You cannot say that an Eved has a din of Edus. Asya Edus, Bekal Vachomer Mi Isha. Because we can learn from the world of Isha, which is a what, which is one status. We know that an Isha is not shaykh by most cases of edus, um, and an eved is a kol shekin. Let's see how. Uma Isha shehi ruuya lavo bekal psula de edus. Your average Yiddish woman who obviously is allowed to marry into the kal, into the kahal, right? Talking about our wives are allowed to marry into kahal. We're part of the kahal. They married us. Their psula de edus. Women are exempt from, not able to be edim. If that's true, then evet she'ein roi lavo bakal, then an evet who's limited in who he can marry, he can only marry another, a shifcha, but he can't marry into the regular kahal. Ein o din she pasal edus. Pashat, that you cannot say such a thing. You can't argue that an evet has a din of achiv and that he's similar to a woman. Because a woman is psula the edus, and an evet's worse than a woman because an, an isha is ru'ya lava bakal. You look like you have a question. Oh, I'm just wondering all those suits over there. Why? <clears throat> like, why is it doubtful? Evet and isha? Yeah. Because the evet kanani has a halachic status of a woman in that he's, he's pater from mitzvah sasesha as mangrama, and chayev the mitzvah sasesha lo as mangrama. Mm -hmm. So let's say uh, the mitzvah of Shmira Shabbos, whatever. Mitzvah, pick your mitzvah, so I say Simcha, whatever it is. So he's he's identical to a woman in that way. And she's Psula Le'edus, and he's worse than she is. So Kal Vachomer, if an Isha, who's Ru'uya Lavo Bekahal, she's able to marry you, right? Your wife married you, you're, you're Kasher, she's Ru'uya Lavo Bekahal. She's Psula Le'edus, then an Evan who cannot marry into the Kahal, all the more so he's Psula Le'edus. Well, I know it's just strange that who you can marry is the determining factor. Oh, oh, oh. No, it's not, it's not so much that. It's that Kal Vachomers find one feature on one side that doesn't apply to the You're right. It, there's not a logical progression in, in regards to saying that, therefore, an Isha is better. But it is to say that, there, that she has one up on him. And we'll see in a second that there are arguments in the other direction. For example, let's look at the next one. It says the Gemara, wait one second. That's not a great Kal Vachomer. Mal Isha shekain eina ru'ya lemila tomar be'eved shehu ro'i lemila. Okay, but a woman, she's p'tura from... Uh, according to most religions, she's Ptura from uh, the world of Brismila. Mashain can never does Taka have a den of Brismila. So there, are same, same point as before text, is that we're trying to find features that apply to one that don't apply to the other. It's like, remember when we were little kids, the highlights in the back, they had identifying, find the difference between the two pictures. That's what we're doing. Anisha has a difference in Ru'ya Levovaka. He has a difference in that he has he's Shaykh to the mitzvah of Mila. Says the, says the Gemara, well, that argument about an Ebed is not a very good argument to say that he should be chayev, uh, he should be chayev and be allowed to be an Ebed because katan yochiach. What about a katan? She yeshno b'milu pasal edus. I have a five-year-old child, a boy, he had, a, he had the mitzvah of bris mila, and guess what? He's completely pasal The kid has no das. None. Zero. Not until he's 13. 
So therefore, you can't bring a raya that an eved should be an should be able to be an eved as it relates to this because a katan is actually better than an eved because a katan will grow out of his being a katan automatically. The eved's stuck for a long time. Says the Gemara, no, Isha Tochiach, she yeshna be mitzvos A woman can disprove that case of the child because she is Shaykh and mitzvos, which a kid is not, and she's still Psulu Le'edus. Bechazer Hadin Lorizah Kirizah, Lorizah Kirizah. What we see here is some cyclical logics where one is slightly different than the other. We have Eved that has one unique feature of Mila. We have an Isha which has one unique feature of Shiyeshno B'mitzvos. And she's also Ruyel Bobakal. And we have the Katan who is a paradox in that he is not really Shaykh and Mitzvos, but he is Chayv and Mila. And when we look at the common denominator between them, uh, we're a little bit more than halfway down on Peiches Menal, but Sada Shavisha Behen. That when we talk about an Isha and a Katan, they are not Shaykh in all mitzvos, and they're both Psul and Lahayd. So the Gemara concludes with this lower Izer Kiri type of approach that an Eved is not allowed to be an aid. So now we've seen that an Isha, and we already knew about an Isha, we already knew about a Kata, and we, we're adding to the list that an Eved is not Shaykh to be an aid. Ma'alehatzara mm-hmm. Shavashabahan, the Gemara says, wait one second, Shekain, Eno Ish. This is a fascinating question. The Gemara says, you tried to learn from two things from the world of Isha and Kata to teach us about an Eved, but an Isha and a Kata have one chisaron in that they're not a man. The Kata is a boy. And the Isha is not a man. Tomar be'eved shehu ish. I should be able to argue that you can't learn a case of Eved from the worlds of Isha and Katan because what the Eved has going for him is that he's a man and you can't learn the din of a man from a woman and a child. They're not, it's not the same thing. They're not the same. They have different statuses. Says the Gemara, you're right. Elatesi mi gazlan. Perhaps we should learn out from the case of a gazlan where he is an Ish but he's also Pasol Edus. So says the Gemara, no. No, the Gazlan was, was a, a self-induced scenario. He did an action to put himself in that bracket. The guy is a thief. He's an idiot. He stole things. Of course, he's going to have halachic issues. There are ripple effects to the decisions that we make. So if you have a Gazlan who goes and steals a car in broad daylight, the reason he's Pasol Edus is because he's a Russia. It's not inherent. It's not comparable to an Eved. Tomar be'eved she'ain ma'asav garmolo. You can't, you can't say that our Mari Makom is a Gazlan. So the Gemara ends with a little bit of a, well, not such a stretch dark answer. How do we know at the end of the day that an Eved is going to be putter? It's not from Isha and Katan because we can't learn from Isha and Katan because they're not Ish. The Gemara concludes two-thirds of the way down. Helotesi mi Gazlan umichad mehanach. We have to do a mix of two answers. We need the Gazlan case. And we also need the case of Chad Mehanach, either the Isha or the Eved, or the Katan. So if you have the case of Gazlan plus Isha or Katan, those two answers combined function enough to teach us that an Eved is, is not allowed to be an aid. It doesn't feel stark to me. No? It should be simpler. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It should be it simpler. Should be it should be simpler, or it should just be a stronger answer. Because, like right now, if we were writing the Shulchan Aruch, right, we would look at this Gemara and we would say, an Eved is not allowed to be an aid. And we learn this from uh, a Gazlan being putter from Edus because he's a man, and a Katan being putter from Edus because he's a, he's not Shaykh and Mitzvos. It just feels piecemeal. It doesn't feel stuck. But the highlight of the Gemara really is, is that it's not a simple thing to learn out. You cannot learn it from Isha because she's not a me. She's not an Ish. You can't learn from Katan because he's not an Ish. So we needed a case where there was a man involved, coupled with someone who wasn't Shaykh and Mitzvos. But the man who stole is Shaykh and Mitzvos. That's what made him a Russia. So therefore, we were stuck with this, you know, difficult answer. But nevertheless, that's the case that an Eved Kenani is not allowed to be. We're, we're not discussing an Eved Ivri Bichlam. We're not. There's seemingly no, I'm, I don't know for sure, but I don't see why an Eved Ivri couldn't be an aid. We're only talking about an Eved Kanani who only has a din in this respect as an Isha. Mar bere de Ravina Amar, Amar Kra, lo yumsu avos albanin. He says that we have a different answer. The Pasuk reads 
in Sefer Dvarim, Lo Yumsu Avo Salbanim. I'm going to read the whole Pasuk and then I'll translate. Lo Yumsu Avo Salbanim, Uvanim Lo Yumsu Al Avos, Ish Bechet O Yumasu. Fathers will not die at their at the hand of their sons. Sons will not die at the hand of their fathers. Each person will die for their own sins. So if a father does an Avera that requires Misa, the father gets killed. But the son can't give testimony on his father and vice versa. If the son does something that deserves Misa, the father can't be the one to give Avis. That's what the Pasuk says. So let's learn this uh, in the Gemara here, according to Marbury the Ravina. What does he say? Lo yumsu avos al banim, lo yumsu al pi avos, she'en lehem chayes lebanim. You can't die from the edus of a father to whom he has no chayes on the banim, to whom he has no chronolo- uh, no genealogical relationship with. The isal kedaitach kid amrinan lo yumsu avos al banim, if we were to assume like the Pasuk reads, I would have thought be edus banim, the testimony of a child. But that can't be what we're talking about. It has to be that we're talking about genealogy and not about a simple case of a son giving aid to son his father. Because if it was about a case of a son giving aid to son his father, then lichtov rachman lo yumsu avos al benehem, a father on his sons, not banim. Banim is not the right word. It should have been benehem, on his sons, not on banim, on sons. It's a little bit of a strange phraseology. My banim, what, why then do we have the odd language of banim instead of benehem? Five lines before the wide line, Shema Mino de lo yumsu al pi avos, you cannot die with the testimony of a father, She'ein lohem chayes banim, who doesn't have a genealogical connection, a biological connection to the person who he's talking about. Elameata, if that's true, then uvanem lo yumsu al avos, what about the rest of the Pasuk? The first part of the Pasuk says lo yumsu avos al banim. The second part of the Pasuk says uvanem lo yumsu al ha avos. Are we talking about a child who's uh, not going to die from the testimony of his father? And this would be code word for a ger, right? The child has a, a father that he's not related to. And if that were to be true, a ger, and that is not the case. A ger is allowed to give edus. A ger is in a higher level than an Ebed Kanani. Pashut, they're on a higher level. An Ebed, has, an Ebed Kanani has a very minimal scope of mitzvos. Obviously, all the Isurim, but the only mitzvos I say are mitzvos I say shalom azman grama. But when it comes to a ger who properly converts, they have all the mitzvos in the Torah. So we have, at the lowest level, we have uh, a goy. Okay? Above a goy, we have an Ebed. We have an Ebed uh, Kanani. Above an Ebed Kanani, Lechorah, we have a ger. Above a ger, we have, uh, uh, I guess, an Isha, and then a ger and then a regular full-fledged Jew. I mean, a gear is a full-fledged Jew, but there's there's like rank and there's like flow. Again, these are not things we like to publicize on billboards because they're nuanced and complicated emotionally, socially. But nevertheless, that's what seems to be from the Gemara is that it would then seem, according to the end of the Pasuk, that a gear is Pasal Edus. The Gemara says, what are you talking about? How can you compare the case of Ger to Evet? Amri, the Gemara says two lines before the wide lines, 15 lines before the bottom of the page. Hachi hashta, what kind of comparison are you making? Ger, when it comes to someone who converts, Nahi granted to Ein Lochais Lamala, he won't have family above him in the generation above. If I were to have converted, if my parents were Goyim and I converted, my parents are not my halachic parents. But lemata yesh lo After I convert, if I then have children, my children would be yidden, just like I'm a yid, even though my father's a god. Lafuke eved, but this is very different than the realms of an eved. De ein lo chais lo lemata lo lemata. This uh, is actually a strong raya, Reb David, to what you were saying earlier that he has no family members above, uh, above or below. And I'll just add in laterally as well. They're not family. You're an eved. You're an eved. Although that does mean that an Ebed Kanani is not shaykh to all of the Isurim and Chumash. It's super interesting. What does it mean that he's like an Isha? Well, so he is shaykh. He is shaykh to him. Right? The Torah Just Yichus. You're... It's your sister. Not his sister. If he had a sister, which he doesn't, then it would be shaykh. I didn't, I didn't know his name. What? I didn't know his name. Interesting. I think that's how it's going. Yeah, we, we that's correct. We assume that if a ger, no ger, forget about a ger. Yeah. If an eved is an eved, 
he has no familial relationships at all. Right. So it's not that the Isser doesn't isn't there, it's just that it doesn't have. I also don't have a sister. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about why. Got it. It's fascinating. But they can they can sleep together. That's what that jerk sure does like say before. But that's what it seems to say. That's certainly what it seems to say before. I don't know practically speaking. We did see him. Shemoter be achoso uve eshes achiv. Wow. Okay. I, I, I'm just bothered. Like you can't just cohabit with anyone you want. Forget about sister or not sister. You can't just. Right. So it's just like. You can't just be flippant. We no. He's a, he's a he's he has a din of an isha. No, no, no. I'm saying even, even the not, fact that the fact that he sleeps not with a not sister. Amen. Forget about Isha. You can't sleep with a Stama person if you're an Isha. You can't just sleep with someone if you're an Isha. If an Ebed is an Isha, a woman can't cohabit with a single guy down the street. That's not allowed. So why is an Ebed allowed to cohabit with this non-sister? Why is his name regular Isurim like everybody else? Right? Isn't that what he says? Because he's a Hamor. He's a chamor as it relates to genealogy. But but if he's like an Isha that he has shaykhs and mitzvos. Forget about sister. Okay. If an Ebed is like an Isha, if an Ebed is like an Isha, can a, a single woman sleep with a random single man? No. There's Yisurim and Chumash like that. There's Psukim. If an Ebed is like an Isha, so can an Ebed sleep with this Maybe she's a biological sister. But who cares? He can't sleep with her anyways. He has other Los to worry about. He can just cohabit with anyone. Forget about Kedushin. Forget about Kedushin. There's nothing, but you can't sleep with someone out of the blue if you're a Yid. That's not allowed. He's like an Isha. So that's, what it, that's the question, is when we say that an Ebed is like an Isha, what is that a full, a full statement? That an Isha, uh, it's not. It's not. It's just, it's, then I'm just asking, what is the scope of Evid is like an Isha? Yeah. You were not saying you're not here. Both parents are Jewish or just the mother? In regards to what? To genealogy? Yeah. I mean, the father is, we, we do it at Bris Ben Abraham. Right. The father's a zero. Halachically speaking, um, I should be careful with my words. That's uh, it's... Huh. Well, even one sixteenth. The baby's a hundred percent Jewish. Hundred percent Jewish. Yeah, I've had multiple cases of women in their young forties who weren't. They never found Mister Right. They sperm bank. Mm -hmm. And called the parish Miruba parish the Zeras. It's relevant if it's Jewish, but it's definitely Goyish. I say it's. And Allah Khalamaisa, baby Zid. Because it's uh it's, it's a din of the Rechem. She can't. So the Gemara says the Hachi Hashta line and says there's no comparison between the world. We're never going to finish, by the way. We're going to have to interrupt at some point. Um, but the, the Gemara says uh, the next album is even harder than this one. So we'll be here a while, or we won't. Uh, the Gemara says that uh, there's really no comparison. Hachi Hashta, how can you compare Ger, where the Ger at least will have children who are Yidden? But an Evid has no family. And the Isalka Daitach Ger Pasal Edus, if you wanted to even say that a Ger is Pasal Edus, which it's not even true, then Lichtov Rachman Lo Yumsu Abosal Banem Lichadam Rinan. Then you should have written the Pasuk the way that would have made more sense. Lo Yumsu Edus Banem, but that the Torah doesn't say it that way. And Vinichtov Rachman Vanem Lo Yumsu Abos to Shamas Minatarta. Therefore, the way, because of the way it was written, we can learn two things. Chada Lo Yumsu Banem Be Edus Abos. One is that children can't be killed with the Edus of a father. And second, the Edach, first of the very long lines, is that there can't be, uh, you can't die based on sons who don't have a genealogical, halachic genealogical connection. The Eved, Nafka, Lebi, Kalbachomer, Miger, Umager, Delamalahu, Dein, Lochais, Avalamati, Esh, Lochais, Pasal, Edus. If a Ger, if, again, this is all theoretical, what would have been? If we would have said that a ger was going to be aser based on the original phrase, phrasing of the pasuk, then he would have been puzzled. Then evet she'ein loch 
she'en lo chayes, lo lamala b'lo lamata, ain't no din she'e pasal edus. That's not what the Pasuk said, but that would have been the Kalva Chomer. Elamid the Kasa Rachman, Lyum Sovas Al Bonim, when it's not written Benem, but Bonim, to Mashma Lyum Sual Pi Avo, Shain Lo Chayas Bonim, Shmamino, Evet Shain Lo Chayas, Lo Lamal, Lo Lamata, who ha Pasal Edus, Aval Ger, Kaven the Yesh, Lo Chayas Lamata, Kosher Edus. Very complicated, Limudim on Bonim versus Benehem and the two halves of the Pasuk, but the Gemara concludes clearly that there is a distinction between an Eved and a Ger, and it's a very subtle distinction in regards to reality, and that is that because an Eved will never have Jewish descendants, um, again, unless he converts, if, you're, if, you, if he remains an Eved, he'll have no Jewish descendants, so he could never give Edus. Mash Enkin, if you're a Ger, even if your father and mother are both Goyim Doraisa, but because you yourself converted a woman, whatever, man converted, you converted and you married a Yid, so now you now you have Jewish descendants, so now your, your, your Edus is Shaykh, which means that the edus is only shaykh because you can create other Jews, even if you don't create other Jews. But it just means that you have the capacity for lineage. And that's based on the psukim. It's not logical uh, connection point between the fact that you're able to have Yiddish kids means you're shaykh the edus in logic. But because of the psukim, that is how we conclude. The... Yeah. That's a guy. It's not his kid. Kid's a Jew. The father's a guy. Evid Kanani, even though he has a din of an Isha. No. Even by your regular father with routine, a 100% slam dunk, that's my child, it's still only a chazaka. I started telling this to parents who intermarry, by the way. It's my loophole of getting out of very difficult conversations. I tell them, you know, even in the in the underbelly, uh, under the hood of Jewish law, the relationship between a mother and a child is 100%. And the relationship between a father and a child is a chazaka. It's a halachic legal assumption. So therefore, we always follow the mom. Oh, your wife's a Christian? Okay, the baby's also not Jewish. It's helped me quite a bit, actually. Um, okay. And the chitema, if you want to say that really lichtov rachman of the pasuk should have been written the other way, vanim lo yumsu al avos sehem lamali dekasa rachman of vanim lo yumsu al avos to mashma lo yumsu al al pi vanim shemem chayis shemem chayis avos. Then why would the Torah have said the other part of the pasuk of vanim lo yumsu al avos, which would have implied that you cannot die based on the testimony of children who have no genealogy? So the Gemara responds, I did the kasa lo yumsu avos al vanim pasav nami uvanim lo yumsu al avos. The end of the pasuk was really not meant for inference. Normally we see this in Mishnais, but not in Pesukim. We've seen a couple of times in this Masechta where we see it even in Pesukim. End of sugya number one. Uh, we're just going to review very quickly. If you are a full-fledged Yid and you are a male, you're kasher le'edus. If you are a full-fledged Yid and you are a woman, you're not kasher le'edus. If you are a ger uh, and you are a kasher le'edus. If you are an eved kenani, you are not kasher le'edus. If you are a katan, you are not kasher le'edus. That will be our little chart for today. Most of it's intuitive to us. Maybe we would have had a little bit of a suffix with the eved because he's male but has halachic responsibilities like a female, like a yid, like a Yiddish woman. Okay, fine. Let's get into another difficult sugya that we're not going to finish. The Gemara says, two lines from the bottom, Cheshot, Bukatan, Pigyas, and Ra. We said in our Mishnah that you should never get in a fight with Cheshot or Katan, because if they hurt you, they're Pater, and if you hurt them, you're Chayiv. Tells the Gemara a story as follows. Please hold cup, because the names are repetitive. Ime de Rib Shmuel Bar Abba, Mehagrunya, Abbas Nesibale, the Rebbe Abba. There's two Rebbe Abbas here. Shmuel's blood father was Abba. That was his name. And his mother had a second marriage with Rebbe Abba, a different Rebbe Abba. She only seemingly married people named Rebbe Abba. The first Rebbe Abba was the one with whom she had Shmuel. The second Rebbe Abba was a stepfather to Shmuel. And with this second husband, with the stepfather, Ksavtinu Lenichse, the Rebbe Shmuel, Bar Abba Biro, and what she wanted to do was write um, write a, a will and testament that said, um, I, in my second marriage with Rabbi Abba number two, I want all my money to go to Shmuel from Abba number one. I don't want my step my, my husband to have any of the money. I want it all to go to Shmuel. So Shmuel will get it. And the stepfather, Rabbi Abba number two, will get nothing. Basra Deshiva, after she died, turning to the top of Pechesim Abbez, Azal Rav Shmuel, Rav Shmuel Bar Abba came to Rav Yirmiya Bar Abba. Here's a third Rabbi Abba, just because, why not? Why wouldn't we? 
Okay. And Ukme Benichse. And the Gemara says that Halacha Lamaisa, the money belongs to Shmuel. What that means is that the mother, Mrs. Uh, I can't even say her last name. I don't even know. The woman, Shmuel's mother, has the right to skip giving her money to the step. What? Mrs. Abba. Yeah, not helpful. Not helpful at all, actually. Yeah, well, Shmuel's mother is the best descriptor of her. So Shmuel's mother is able to say, I don't want you, husband number two, the stepfather of Shmuel, to get my money. I want all of my money to go to my son. That works. However, Azal Rabbi Abba, the stepfather, was very upset. This new husband was very upset. Azal uh, Rabbi Abba, Amr Lamil Sakame de Rabbo Shaya, and uh, Rabbi Abba brought the Shaila to his Rav. That's what we do. And we bring uh, Shailas to Rabbanim. Azar of Oshaya, Amra Kame de Rabbi Yehuda. And he brought it to Rabbi Yehuda. So we had um, Rabbi Yirmiya Bar Abba giving the Psak that the money goes to Shmuel. And now we have Rabbi Yehuda. What does he say? Amar Lei, Hachi Amar Shmuel. That's so funny because Shmuel himself said the following thing. It's not the same Shmuel. It's just the same name. It's just the same name. I just told you there's a lot of repetitive names in this say it's not the same Shmuel. Oh. It's the Shmuel. The. the. Uh, I don't even know what that means. But let's continue. Peches no. Amidbez, five lines down. So what did what did Shmuel, uh, the Shmuel Paskin? Haisha, I don't follow. Haisha Shemachra Benichse Melug Bechai Baila Umesa. A woman who sells her nichse malug, let's review. Nichse malug is what a woman brings into a marriage where she owns the principal and he owns the payros. Okay? So she brought that into the marriage and she sold it during her lifetime and then she died. What's the din? Haba'al motzi miyad halakuchos. Her husband, let's put names to it, Rabbi Abba can go to Shmuel and take it back. Why? Because she had no right to sell the nichse malug. He had a connection to the peros. So there's a machlokas between uh, Rabbi Yirmiya bar Abba and Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yirmiya bar Abba said that a woman is allowed to sell nichse malug. And according to Rabbi Yehuda, a woman is not allowed to sell nichse malug. And we'll get into the belly of this machlokas in a little bit. Um, Ruha kamed Rabbi Yirmiya bar Abba. They brought this line of Shmuel back to the first person, to Rabbi Yirmiya bar Abba. And Amar Luhu. Look, uh, all I know is the following Mishnah. And my gosh, is this Mishnah going to give us a curveball? One who writes all of his property to his son for after the time that the father dies. No, this was, let's assume everyone's still alive. He wrote the will, right? He said, this piece of property, this three-acre piece of property at 123 Main Street belongs to my son when the father dies. The son doesn't yet have rights yet because the father is still alive. And because the father is still alive, so he can't sell it. The father also can't sell it because he's earmarked it for his son. So this three-acre piece of property at 123 Main Street is trapped. Nothing can happen to it at all. The son can't sell it because it's not his yet. The father can't sell it because he earmarked it for his son. What if the rules were broken? Machar ha'av, if in fact the father did sell this piece of property at 123 Main Street, mechurim achiyamos, they're sold, meaning, okay, I guess you sold it, but it only applies until the day that the father dies, because what was the condition of the will and testament? That it belongs to my son from the day, the father will say, it belongs to his son from the day that he dies. So therefore, when the son dies, when the father dies, then then the son can reclaim the property at one two three Main Street. He'll have the deed and the will. What? So the so the Brisa here is saying explicitly that if the father broke that rule and sold it, so then the sale is not a shavua. It's not a shavua. You just he wrote a will. Sava. No, it's not the case. It was earmarked, and he broke the rule and sold it anyways. So he's a, he just wasn't, he's not from, or whatever. He just wasn't, he, he wanted the money, you know? So the din is that after the father dies, the son can say, here's my tzava, give me back the property, the three acres at 123 Main Street, that's mine. 
No. The Lukuchos lose out. Yeah. It does seem like the Lukuchos do have Aldas in it. No, that but that's not the principle. That just means that they can benefit from the orchard. But the sun doesn't have to pay for the principal cost of the field. It's it's his it's his. Why does he have to pay for it? Yes, a hundred percent. No discount on the price. It's just that whatever fruit, let's say the let's say the, yes, the pears. Oh, they get killed on the principal. Yeah. Let's say it's a million dollar field and they made a hundred thousand dollars of payrolls. I said they got crushed. They got crushed. So that's what the Bryce says. Let's let's talk about the reverse case, quarter of the way down. Machar Haben, if the son were to have sold it when he shouldn't have. So let's review. The father writes the will that I'm giving three acres at one, two, three Main Street to my son. And the father says from the day that he dies, the son was not allowed to sell it. It wasn't even in his property. I mean, he gave it away. So then, ein lo lelokech ad sheyamosav. What does this line mean? It means that that the the purchaser doesn't own it until the father dies, meaning the son's not allowed to sell anything until the father dies. Sale. It's a good sale, but it it's, it has like a stay of execution a little bit. Like it it's a good sale, but it doesn't kick in until the until the patira, and then because it's his because. Yeah, it's, it's the reverse of retroactive. I don't know what the what the right phrase is. At two p.m., he's it's not. It's not the right word. At two p.m. on January first, he said, "I'll sell you this piece of property." At four p.m., the father dies. So between two and four, the son nothing. At four o'clock, then the sale goes through. What? Can I tell you? We, not all of us follow the rules all the time. But does that mean he can collect the money early? You can collect that part doesn't matter. That part doesn't matter. That's a logistical question. But the actual ownership piece only kicks in because the son wasn't allowed to sell, really wasn't allowed to sell until he owns. So he sold it before his father died. And then the transaction only became real when the father died. But it was real. We don't have to say we don't say it was an invalid transaction and he has to do it again. It was valid. It just was, uh, he pre-gamed. The buyer can't sell it. Pre-market selling. There you go. That's something like that. The buyer can't sell it itself until that father dies. Because it's not his. Right. Mm -hmm. That's true. What did you say, Stan? <laughs> For that, you need Rishonim. Okay. Says the Gemara, 12 lines down. And this is where things get... Um, it's actually quite a beautiful Gemara. It's, it's a little difficult, but it's really, it's really very beautiful. We're going to get to the, to the again that inner, that inner core of what's actually going on here. Kimais Avmiha, when the father actually dies after the son sells it. Okay, so the son sells it on January first. When the father dies, Isle Lilo then it's owned by the new people. The Afal Gav de Meis Haben Haav. This is true. Here's a twist. Even if the son dies before the father does. So let's get the flow of events right. The father writes a tzava, that the three acres on one to three Main Street belongs to the son. The son, this was on January 1st in the morning, 9 a.m. At noon, the son sells the property to Lakujos. And the son dies. Then the father dies. What? The son has version? Not as of yet, no. Huh. No. Have you learned Shas before? This is, uh, we'll get there. So then, assuming that he's the only son, so then when the son dies, even if the son dies first and then the father dies, once the father dies, everything kicks into gear and then the transaction is considered valid. So a lot of things happen. So what was written, son sold, son died, father died, Lakujos take ownership. Okay. And this is true even de lo asuli de haben. This is true even though in the son's lifetime, he never took ownership over that item because he died before his father died. And the ownership of 123 Main Street was only after the father died, but the son's death preceded the father's death. So even though there was no moment in time when the son was alive that he owned 123 Main Street, but the flow of events still work out that the Lakujos take ownership after the father dies. And this is Kirib Shimon ben Lakish to Amar, Lo Shnames Haben Bechai Haab, De Lo Asi Lide Ben, Lide de Ben. 
לא שנה למייס האה בחיי הבן, דאסו לידי דבן, קונה לא קיח. אוקיי. So far, so good. This is our flow of events. This is the knech, is that if the if one, two, three Main Street was put in the will that the father says, Ruben says, I'm giving it to my son, Shimon. And then Shimon turns around and makes a quick buck and try and sells it now. And then and then uh, the son dies. And then the father dies. The Lekuchos take ownership. But this is only according to Shimon ben Lakish. Let's see that primary Mari Makam over here, one third of the way down, Pei Chesem and Beis. The Gemara says to Itmar, Machar haben b'chai ha'av, so here we see a machlokas. The, the presentation we just saw was that the lokach was konen. And now we're going to go through each of their shitas. Why does Rav Yochanan say that in this flow of events, the uh, the lokach does not make a kenyan? Because Omar Lach Kiktani Masnisen Machar Haben Lokan Lokach Ad Shemul Saav Bechimay Saav Isle Le Lokach. Only when the father dies, that's when there's going to be purchasers. The Lo Meis Haben Bechay Haav Da Asili De Haben, because the son did not die, and therefore the property did get into the actual hands of the child. Aval Meis Haben Bechay Haav. But unlike Rish Lakish, Rav Yochanan says that if the son were to have died in the lifetime of the father, the Lo Asili De Haben. If the son dies before the father dies, because the money never made it into the actual halachic rishus of the son, nothing doing alma. And this is the very, very deep uh, part of the Gemara, but this part's easy already. Alma kasavar kinyan peros ke kinyan aguf dami. Now we're talking about nichse malug, that the kinyan peros, the ability to have ownership over peros is just like the principle. With nichse malug and the husband-wife dynamic, the wife owns the principle, the husband owns the peros. But, says the Gemara, according to Rav Yochanan, because the father still owns the rights to the peros, therefore he owns the rights to the principal. And therefore, until the father dies, the son does not actually have full ownership and therefore the transaction to the lakuchos cannot be valid. And when the son sold it, it wasn't his because when he sold it, it was during his father's lifetime, and he died before his father, and therefore he couldn't actually transact because his father still had rights to the payros. You can't sell nichse maluk when your father's still alive because he owns the payros. Not allowed. And Rav Shimon ben Lakish, which was the Gemara's presentation at the top of Pechas and Beis, he said, Omar, kona lokeach, he said that the lokeach does own it because kiktani mas nisen, when our brysa taught a third of the way down, that machar haben ein li lokeach ad shiyamu sa'av, that the lakuchos make, uh, uh, do acquire after the father dies, ki mais av mihas isle li lokeach, lo shna lo meis haben mechai ha'av, do asli de de ben, lo shna meis haben mechai ha'av, do lo asli de de ben, kona lokeach doesn't matter. Look at the Brisa. The Brisa just says that the father has to die. Alma. What do we see from Reish Lakish? Reish Lakish holds Alma Kasavar Kenyan Peros. Lav Kenyan Aguf Dami. So this is where we need the word bifurcation. This is a good usage of the word. We have we have our Nichse Malug within. Do you know what it means? Yeah. You know, <laughs> we, <laughs> fork in the road. All right. So our, our 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 distinction to be made is that do we view the two parts of nichse malug as one or two? Do we look at the principal as one entity that belongs to the wife and the peros belongs to the husband? Do we say that they're really tied up in a nice, neat little bow and they're really both shaykh to the husband? That's what Rav Yochanan and Reish Lakish are arguing about. And that's why, in our case, they have a, a machlokas about it. If you say that the peros and the nechse malug, the peros and the principal are inter inextricably bound, then I understand why Rav Yochanan would say that the Kenyan didn't work. Masha'en Kain, according to Rav Shemin ben Lakish, who says that they're not inextricably bound, the peros are not an indicator of the, the capacity to sell the principal. And therefore, if the son tries to be mocher, what his mother gave him, which was the it works. And because of that, therefore, whatever he is selling, he is selling. The un Let's stop right here. It's going to take me another 20 minutes. We're going to stop right here at Ve'on on Hashta, two-thirds of the way down, about eight lines before the wide lines. We'll stop right here, and we'll pick up Emir Tzashem tomorrow with the balance of this. Amud, wishing you all a beautiful night.